just plug it in. Download. Who needs a card reader anymore? I mean, modern cameras have fast USB ports. In many cases, they're technically as fast as most card readers are today. So how much does the old wisdom of using a card reader instead of your camera really apply anymore? And this, and that's what we're going to look at in this R5 tip. We are going to talk about downloading images from our camera over USB, how it's done with Canon cameras, the performance, the pros, the cons, that kind of thing. Now that said, now's as good a time as, as any for me to give you that good old disclaimer that I always end up putting in these videos. I'm including this in both my EOS R5 and R5 Mark II tips and tricks series. However, the process that I'm going to describe is generally the same for all of Canon's mirrorless cameras and most of their DSLRs going back at least to the 5D Mark IV era, if not much further. However, while the methods are the same, as with anything that's performance related, performance can vary wildly depending on a lot of factors. These include the computer that you're using, the storage that's in your computer, what kind of storage it is, solid state, hard drive, fast, whatever, the USB cable that you're using, the camera model, of course, and finally, the type of memory card that is in your camera. Is it an SD card? Is it a CNF Express card? Is it a UHS-1 or 2 SD card? And so on. So with that out of the way, the question then is, what are the gotchas in downloading images through your camera? I mean, after all, even Canon's EOS R had a five gigabit per second USB connection, and the cameras like the R5 and R5 Mark II have 10 gigabit per second USB 3.2 interfaces. So really, in theory, all you should need is a USB cable and you're good to go, right? Well, maybe, and maybe not. Now, the two biggest factors you have to consider here are performance and power. In many cases, and certainly this was borne out in my testing, the camera just is not as fast as a standalone card reader is. Now, even though my cameras have 10 gigabit per second USB 3.2 interfaces, and that literally is the same interface as the card reader that I used, the performance that I saw never was the same. In testing with my R5, using a SanDisk 170 megabyte per second UHS-1 SD card and my MacBook Pro, I saw only 56 megabytes per second transfers when using the camera. However, with a ProGrade brand USB card reader plugged into the same computer with the same card, I saw 155 megabytes per second, which is basically 91% of the theoretical maximum speed of the card I was using. I did a similar test with my R5 Mark II and ProGrade or a ProGrade Gold 1700 megabyte per second CF Express card. Going through the camera, I saw only around 147 megabytes a second. While reading with my card reader, I saw in excess of 700 megabytes a second. Now, both of those tests were done on my M1 MacBook Pro, and since drivers and software implementations can al always affect things, I repeated the at least the CF Express card test on my Windows machine. Now, on Windows, I did see slightly perform better performance across the board. The camera on its own, or with the re as the card reader, delivered around 200 megabytes per second, and the card reader still performed in excess of 700 megabytes per second. So. Why is there a difference? Well, there's a lot of potential reasons that that could be the case. For example, in the case of the SD card, it may be that Canon simply doesn't support the proprietary its extensions to the UHS-1 standard that SanDisk came up with as a way to increase the UHS-1 speeds from 100 megabytes a second to 170 megabytes a second. It's also possible that in general, there is just less dedicated bandwidth available inside the camera going between the USB port and the card slot than say the sensor and the card slot. Finally, card readers are what are called USB mass storage devices. This is the same standard protocol and interface that USB hard drives and thumb drives and solid state disks use for transferring information. This means that the software is standard, obviously, but it's also very well optimized for data transfer. 
Now, on the other hand, Canon doesn't use that on their cameras. Instead, they use the Media Transport Protocol, or MTP. Now, this is a separate, albeit standard, USB stack that's designed for cameras, or smartphones for that matter, to expose images on their internal media without exposing their internal media as a storage device. Now, while the MTP system can be fast, at least in theory, it's also not as well optimized for data transfers in the same way that USB mass storage devices are. Now, the other consideration I mentioned is power, or more specifically, battery usage. A USB card reader simply doesn't require your camera to be on, and therefore using its battery power. Now, that said, it's also not guaranteed that your camera will have to run on battery power either when using USB, maybe. In testing, I found that both my R5 and R5 Mark II could run off of USB power delivery if the computer that it was connected to was capable of providing the required power profiles. Now, in the case of my workstation, that was, and both cameras used USB power delivery when I tested them instead of running on their batteries. However, my 14 inch M1 MacBook Pro, perhaps not unsurprisingly, given that, given that it is a laptop and an ultra portable at that, doesn't provide the required USB power delivery profiles for either camera. And this was also true even when its battery was fully charged and it was hooked up to an external power supply. So downloading on the road to my MacBook Pro, which is how I would envision using this and where I think it makes the most sense to do this, would also cause me to run the camera off its battery, not USB power, which of course is going to limit the number of shots that I get on a charge or require me to charge more often. Now, with that said, let's talk a little bit about how all of this works on Canon's cameras in terms of downloading your images. First, if you are using an EOS R1, R3, R5 Mark II, R6 Mark II, R7, R8, or R10, before you plug your camera into your computer, you will need to find the Choose USB Connection App setting in the menus and make sure that it is set to the photo import slash remote control option. On the R5 Mark II, you will find this on the various settings page or page four of four in the purple network menu. On the other cameras I've listed, you will find this in the setup section somewhere, usually on page four or five, depending on the camera. Now, when you plug your camera into your computer, it won't just show up as a normal disk drive. And this is because Canon uses that media transfer protocol. Now, if you use software like Adobe's Lightroom, the camera will show up as a device and in the import source list in the import dialog, and you can just import from it as you normally would. However, if you want to copy files manually, then you will need to do the following. On Windows, your camera will actually show up in File Explorer under this PC. You'll see a little icon for a camera and your camera's name. If you double click on that icon, you will see a drive for each of the cards that are in the camera, assuming your camera supports more than one type of card. And you can then navigate into those cards and the folders and so forth and copy files from your camera the same way you would copy something anywhere else in Windows. That's drag and drop or whatever it is that you choose to use. Now on Mac OS, the process is slightly different because the camera is an MPT device and MPT devices don't show up, MTP, I'm sorry, devices don't show up as disks on your desktop in Finder. Instead, you're going to have to open the image capture app. You can search for it in Spotlight, look for image capture and then select the camera from the list on the left-hand column. After a few minutes of processing, the computer will come back and it will display all of the images and videos that are currently on the camera in the right-hand column as thumbnails along with a whole bunch of associated details. 
And at this point, you can either go through that right-hand column and select the images or videos that you want to download, and then click download to only download those specific files. Or you can click download all to download everything that is on the camera. Now, if you have never used the image capture app before, it does have a rudimentary duplicate file detection capability. Now, this is not as sophisticated as what's in, for example, Lightroom Classic. However, the app won't re-download an image that exists with the same name if that image is already in the destination folder. Moreover, it will show you files that it recognizes as having been downloaded already with a check mark in the list of images on the camera. So, with that said, is there a good reason to use the camera to download files? Well, aside from it being the only thing you have access to, or you're only doing one file and it's really the most convenient way to do it, truth is I'm hard pressed to think of one. Uh, I found across the board transfer speeds were only a fraction of what they'd otherwise be using a standalone reader. And in most cases, certainly more than likely when you're using a laptop, the, in addition to it taking longer to download from the camera, it's also going to use more camera battery power because of that, so you're going to have even fewer shots in your process. Now, I would love to make the argument that it saves space in your bag since you just need a USB cable. However, Given the performance losses and the fact that a good card reader is really not that hard or that large, I'm hard pressed to find a very compelling argument there either. That said, I hope you found this useful or at least interesting. If you did, let me know by hitting that like button. Also, if this kind of thing seems like it might be your kind of thing, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Finally, if you'd like to help and support this channel, you can help us for free by liking this video, sharing it with your friends, and leaving a comment with your experiences. Likewise, you can support us by hitting that thanks button or buying yourself something you've always wanted from one of the affiliate links in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.